this is London, the financial heart of the United Kingdom. It is known for its vibrant and bustling environment, hence its busy traffic and lifestyle. It is known for its great civilization and presence in the world. Here I'm going to be discussing about an important topic reflecting on today's modernism. The focus will be on the status of women, who are estimated to be half the workforce in the United Kingdom. Here we see the Suffragettes, a national and political union of women that was formed to fight for the right of for women to vote. Emmeline Bankhurst formed this group in 1903 to equalize women with men who neglected women to contribute in political events such as election. One of the best examples of women's superiority is Purika, queen of the Celtic tribe Isni. She was most famous for uprising England's independence from the Romans as you could see here. These were women who bravely and courageously contributed in World War and World War II, breaking through the boundaries of sexism and gender inequality. This leads us to the central and main topic where it may raise controversy. It is about whether women are truly safe in today's modern society or not. Hello, my name is Abdurrahman Mahmoud. Today I'm going to be making a short project film in regards to women's safety and security. Now I am in the borough of Hounslow in west of London. So I'm going to be discussing with a few youngsters who live within the borough of Hounslow and I'm going to ask them about whether women are really safe in society. Hi, uh, name is Mandy. Yes, nice to meet you, Mandy. Abdul Rahman. Yes, Mandy Abdul Rahman. Thank you. Welcome here. What's your name as well? Hamza Yaya. Nice to meet you. Yes. We're going to be discussing in regards to whether women are really living safely or not. In your uh, honest opinions and point of view, do you believe that women are really living safely nowadays? Basically, I don't think women are living safely anywhere in around the world because no matter what, if you're from like a wife or husband have arguments, they hit each other, they get they put people uh, each other in the wrong. They don't defer. nowadays. Now, nowadays, I think um, they don't protect each other. Should be protecting each other, and they, they and they have a bad impact on the kids and stuff like that. To be honest, they, um, it's not safe at all. They need like more tolerant, more training. If you know what, in in the one sense, to be honest, um, if if I if I had um, control over this, I would try to help every 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 like um, every single woman out there that um to be a good parent. That's my point. From your own point of view, you say you, you believe that women are not really living safely, so they are not really living in a safe society. Well, you can say some uh, some people are living safely, but some people not. But then you can't really say anything. Um, um, you can't really say anything because you don't really live in their houses. Because or unless you go around every like you can't really go around um um beat up women's houses or do service because that's gonna take ages and ages. But if, if obviously if they call up the news and told them their stories, then obviously you would understand what they say, uh, what they said and stuff. So we're going to be finding out the causes of why does women not really safely. So we're going to be finding the factors that actually uh, contribute into the cause of these incidents and problems that happens toward women. Yeah. So I think uh, also the parents they should be supervising their children what they're doing on computers and laptops, whatever they're watching. So, yes. yeah, I think also the type of uh, environment they're living in. So, in short, do you believe, you know, that you know, por pornography desensitizes the minds of the youth who actually who watches those kind of videos? And you also believe that, you know, par parents should be uh, having more control and surveillance toward their children. And, and to you, Hamza, do you think, do you have any uh, ideas uh, about the reasons that causes women to be um, insecure in society? Well, basically, it can be it can be the children as well, because obviously, I'm obviously as you know, I'm autistic, and I, I mean, since I was born, um, I never had a relationship with my mum, and I've like um, I've argument, I had arguments and fights with her, and she can fill in school because obviously she brought me up, she raised me, and then there's me treating her in a different way, if you know where I'm coming from. But then you got other children that just don't have mothers, so technically they 
we should be lucky for like we but then obviously people live their own lives they got a different way of living we got a different living with different cultures we come from different places and um, we do all the um, things that if every everyone was the same it would be boring that's my point of view to be honest and we now we're going to be um looking um uh, towards um, the comparisons of um, strict law uh, toward protecting women in other countries, Mandy. You know, um, do you, countries you know such as in the Middle East, such as um, the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, they have uh, they believe they have um, Sharia law that actually uh, constricts um, the actions of men who have the who are tempted to uh, commit assault toward women, such as rape or um, any uh, related criminal activity. Um, toward women. So, do you think that um, sh um, strict laws such as um, um, imprisonment, uh, life imprisonment for many years should be applied in the UK? Uh, my opinion on this is basically not about this country or as well as some countries um, such as um, the whole Asia basically, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, everywhere. I think um, if someone's raping a woman, man is raping a woman, I think they shouldn't be like um, in prison for their whole life, but I think they should be punished like killing sentences, maybe. Yeah. So you believe that? Yeah. They, uh, that uh, the, the they could, they'd that be the killed. Yes, you believe that the government should actually should apply most um, extreme rules. Because you know, yeah. Sorry, just but to be honest, people like that they should die. Basically, it's out of order. And um, you, obviously, as you see, you probably watch some TV, on like, dramas and stuff. There's a lot of stuff, and that's why there's less girls, like there's less, uh, less women, like um, secure, unsecured to come out and stuff like that. Did like, you see that? Um, you must have heard of that story in France with that t teacher run, um, that 15 year old girl run away to France with that teacher, 44 teacher, and they, literally. Because yeah, this yeah, is not a yeah, joke, you yeah. know, like raping a woman is not a joke. Um, it's a very serious matter. So I think the government just should, yeah, apply more strict rules. Um, regarding um, women rape, yeah, rapes. Yes. So yeah, I think um, that sentence should be applied to something like that, which could yes. yeah yes. stop more more men who will let who will um, if they see this happening, a man is kill man is getting killed by because he raped a woman. So other men will be like more aware of this. They won't rape for women for this. Okay. Yeah. So basically, you believe the Parliament of the UK should. Um, apply serious rules, uh, serious measures that actually um, um, pro prohibit such actions of uh, assault toward women. Um, to be honest, um, this rape thing is really serious and if one man does it, people fear other men think it's the right to do it, but it's not a right to do it because it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be a law of rape and it shouldn't be, they shouldn't be touching a woman unless they marry what well, well, if it's boyfriend or girlfriend, I can stand by and they marry that. But if they don't know each other or strangers or anything, that's totally out of order. We're going to be continuing with our discussions uh, with a new contributor who is keen to join us. And so here we're going to be welcoming him. Myself, Hi. Ram Nath, Ram Nath Yadav. Nice to meet you. Hi. We were discussing, you know, in regards to whether women are li do li uh, live safely uh, in society. So, um, do, in your opinion, do you believe that women actually are living safe? To be honest, <coughs> in the whole world, mo women are not safe as much as they should be. Basically, you know, you, you men are allowed to take off their shirt and they're still safe. Why? I believe because that is something that has to do with their freedom. Yeah. So when women wear short clothes or whatever, why they are not safe? It's men, they're playing with women's feeling. They just care for themselves. They just want to take their desire out on somebody. Awesome. Is this right? No. What can be done? That's obviously government should make a strict rules for example you can take as dubai there's 10 20 maybe 30 times less these kind of thing happens why because they are very strict do you know the punishment they give to the people if there's even stealing there, there's a big punishment in dubai exactly. so if there's something like that if the government brings something like that trust me this would have been much better country uh, and you wouldn't hear these kind of news rapes etc stealing there's much things happening as you can see you've done research i've done some research i've been watching news 
So you know what I mean. Um, we're going to be um, asking um, about the risks and the disadvantages that actually happens uh, when uh, women are actually sexually or physically assaulted by men. So we would like to ask the Ram about what sort of risks does women face in society when they are actually um, facing those um, sort of issues? Uh, basically, I've done some research on these kind of things. Uh, I've, I've looked after, you know, some women get raped. I've read, I read their stories. Some women suicide. They, you know, obviously their family reputation go down, and these kind of thing. But you know, those people who done it, who done these kind of bad deeds, I, uh, they don't see this. They don't see what their family is suffering. So this should be stopped at some point, so, and this should be done as soon as possible. So you actually do believe that um, men who experience those um, issues um, do not actually see the perspective of um, the negative side that women experiences when they are actually inflicted with these issues. You know, even the society people, they, they chat uh, some other kind of about the family, etc. The, that's, the, that's the painful thing for the family, that even the society is not helping them. Because they just think, oh, she, she, may, she may, maybe made him rape her, maybe she attracted him. That's not actually the truth. You know what I mean? Right. So this should be stopped. If, if the society helps the family, th they're going to help the family. If they're going to just stone them, give them like bad uh, point of view, then that's more uh, hard for the family to live in the society. So even they might have to move the houses and that's double trouble for them. You know what I mean? Exactly. So you believe so. that it is actually uh, an extra trouble toward women um, to be actually inflicted with these issues. Mr. Hamza, is there any sort of advice you give toward the women? Uh, what sort of thing that they should do um, to protect themselves from being sexually or physically assaulted by men? One advice I was giving to women, stop wearing half naked clothes, like um, obviously skirts and that. Because... <clears throat> And and to be honest, for us, for us, us Muslims and Indians, they should cover themselves at all times. Yeah, that's it. To be honest, I, I, I don't disagree about I this disagree point. Disagree as well. Yes. Uh, according to my my colleague here, as he said uh, that uh, women shouldn't wear short clothes. Why is that? Everyone has equal rights. W uh, clothes are made to be worn. So then, why they shouldn't wear it? We all equal. There's I, nobody I, big or small, yeah. poor or rich. There's nothing like that. Yeah. Everyone is equal according to the UK law, even uh, some other places. Uh, main reason could be also social media, you know. Because yeah. mostly nowadays everybody use social media. They yeah. tell where they're at. Like for example, a girl. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for example, you're following her on Instagram, maybe Facebook, anywhere. Like as in social networking. And right. uh, she's putting or he's putting like a uh, post like, oh, I'm going coffee with my mate, or something like that. These kind of things shouldn't be on Instagram. For example, your whole, whole family, your own family, don't know where you're at. But the whole world on the social media knows you're, you're at that cafe at that time. Is it safe? The government should do something so they can cut down on social networking. Would you actually provide um, to women um, who, are, who migrate to the UK and they are having a lack of awareness to their rights? To be honest, I think the best uh, thing would be to go on the UK law uh, website, do some research, what's their rights, what's their uh, benefits, what things they can get. So here in conclusion, I uh, would like to be thank uh, all the contributors to our show. Um, here is me, me Abdurrahman Mahmoud uh, from Bradford College, um, thanking everybody for watching this video. And I hope that it has actually helped um, women to be more aware of their safety and security. So thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mr. Hamza. Thank you, Mr. Mandy. Thank you, Mr. Mandy. As we have heard from our guests, it goes hand to hand on what men and women does for women to be insecure in a modern and thriving society such as in the UK. This leaves us to decide on what actions to take for a much safer country, free from any source of harassment sexism or gender inequality most importantly to protect its women who should be prioritized as leaders and mothers of upcoming generations